Hello, this is the lesson for section 2.2 two to 2.3. In this section, we are going to see our very first type of statistical graph, and it's a very important one that's called a histogram. In, in data set 2 from appendix B on page 768, there is a list of uh, body temperatures of 108 healthy adults. Uh, we're going to use that list of data to answer the question, how close is normal body temperature to 98.6? You've been told forever that normal is 98.6. We're going to try to analyze that claim a little bit. Well, a list of 108 numbers is, is too many. That's too many numbers to look at. Nobody likes to look at that many numbers. So we're going to try to summarize the data so that we don't have so many numbers to look at. And our first step in doing this is to create what's called a frequency distribution. Frequency distribution is, is a table. Uh, and the basic idea here is that we're going to divide the range of body temperatures into several subintervals, or they're also called classes or bins. And then we're going to count the number of body temperatures in each one of those class. And again, the idea is to use fewer numbers to describe the data. So the first step in creating a frequency distribution is to select the number of classes. Now there's no magical way of doing this. We're going to select 8 because it's a nice round number and things work out nicely. Second, we find the range of body temperatures. And by range, we mean the minimum and the maximum. Now we can do that by simply looking over the list of numbers or we could let a computer do the job. Uh, and it, Either way, the, the minimum comes out to be 96.5 and the max comes out to be 99.6. Third step is we calculate what's called the class width. And that's going to be the width of each one of those subintervals or classes or bins. And the basic idea is that we take the maximum value minus the minimum value and then divide it by the number of classes. And you see how the arithmetic comes out. Now, we're not going to use that number of 0.3875 as the class width. We're going to round it off to 0.4. So that's our class width. Uh, the fourth step is where we actually start creating our table. So again, our distribution has two columns to it. The first is uh, what we call body temperatures. It's going to be the, the, um, each one of those classes or bins or subintervals. The second column is going to contain frequencies. So after we've created our table, the first thing we do is list what we call the lower class limits. So we start off with the minimum temperature of 96.5. That's our first lower class limit. The next one is the first lower class limit plus the bin width of 0.4. So 96.9 is our second lower class limit. The third one is the second lower class limit plus the class width of 0.4, so on and so forth. Next step is we list what we call the upper class limits. Our first upper class limit is going to be 0.1 minus the second lower class limit. We, we subtract 0.1 because our numbers go out to one decimal place. So you see our first upper class limit is 96.8. Our next upper class limit is going to be that first upper class limit plus the bin width of 0.4. And we go on down the list. So there we've created all of our, our, our eight different bins or classes or subintervals. Okay. The next step is we count the frequency. So we look over our list of data and we count the number of data values we have between 96.5 and 96.8. That comes out to be 1. Next we count the number of data values that are between 96.9 and 97.2. That comes out to be 8 and so on and so forth. Now that's a little tedious, not terribly complicated, but a little tedious. Um, most of the times we let the computer do the work. Okay. So that right there is our frequency distribution. It's just a two column table. So w we've uh, accomplished our goal here. We have uh, summarized the data, used fewer numbers to describe it, but we still have a lot of numbers. And so what we want to do is, is draw a picture of what these numbers are telling us. And that picture that we're going to draw is, con is called a histogram. Um, so here you see on the left we have our frequency distribution. On the right we have drawn a vertical and a horizontal axis. The vertical axis is labeled frequencies. And that, that axis goes from 0 up to 35. We stop at 35 because our maximum frequency was at 32. We go in increments of 5. Uh, the horizontal axis we label body temperatures and those are going to contain our different classes or subintervals. 
we start at 96.5 because that's our lowest and we go up to uh, 99.7 because that's just um, a little bit larger than the um, than the last upper class limit. So there we have our axes. Now the first thing we do is we go to that first sub interval from 96.5 to 96.8 and we draw a vertical bar that has height 1 corresponding to the frequency of 1. Next we go to the second sub interval from 96.9 up to 97.3 we draw a vertical bar with height 8 and then our next interval we draw a bar of height 14 and we continue that. So this graph on the right hand side is what we call a histogram. Again that is a picture of our uh, frequency distribution. <clears throat> the last step is the most important one. That's where we actually interpret it. We don't want to draw a graph just for the sake of drawing a graph. We want to draw a graph to better understand what the data is telling us. So here's a few observations. First of all, the class containing 98.6 has the highest frequency. We can see that um, 98. 6 is, uh, is between 98.5 and 98.9 and that class has the highest or tallest bar. Now that's what we would expect if normal really is 98.6. However, note that most of our temperatures are less than 98.6. We have many, many bars um, less than that, that tall one and we only have two short bars that are greater than that, that tall bar. So that again tells us that most of our temperatures are less than 98.6. So that indicates that normal temperature may be less than 98.6. Now that's not a real definitive answer to our question, but um, it, it does indicate our data does indicate that normal may be less than 98.6. Now there are a couple of variations on the basic frequency distribution we need to mention. The first is what we call a midpoint frequency distribution. So here you see in these three columns, the right two columns are our frequency distribution. Um, one uh, additional, uh, one other way that we might label our classes is to label them by the midpoint of the subintervals rather than the, the lower and the upper class limit. So you see the first midpoint there is 96.65. That's just halfway between 96.5 and 96.8. And um, the next midpoint is 97.05. That's halfway between 96.9 and 97.2. So that first and last column would constitute what we call a midpoint frequency distribution. Now we could draw a histogram based off of that midpoint uh, distribution and it would look very very similar to our first histogram. The only difference is how we label our columns. Here we've labeled them with their midpoints as opposed to the left and right endpoints. Another variation is we call a relative frequency uh, distribution. And so you see the, the left two columns there are our frequency distribution. In the last column there we calculate the relative frequencies where we divide each frequency by the total number of data points. So the first one there would be 1 divided by 106 which is 0 .009. What that tells us is that 0.9% of our data values are between 96.5 and 96.8 and um, <clears throat> so then we could draw what we call a relative frequency histogram based off that information which again looks very similar to our frequency distribution the main difference here is how we label our vertical axis instead of labeling it with frequency we label it with percent next we need to talk about a, a special type of distribution Here's a frequency distribution of the weights of, of about 30 men. And um, this would be a midpoint frequency distribution. And so we see here that the weights range from about 120 pounds up to about 225 pounds. Now what we want to note here is the pattern of the frequencies. They start at a low of 1. They gradually increase to a max of 9. And then they decrease to a low of 1 again. And also note that we have roughly the same number of classes below that max as above the max. Not exactly the same number, but roughly. And so for that reason, we say that the, the distribution is quote unquote symmetric. Any type of distribution that exhibits this behavior of starting a little low, increase to max, and decrease to a low again has what we call a normal distribution. <clears throat> 
we were to draw a histogram of that distribution, it would look something like this. Um, and again, notice the shape there on the left. It starts at a low. In the middle, it increases to a high. And then on the left, it decreases to a low again. That shape characterizes our normal distribution. Uh, now, one thing we like to do with a distribution like this is draw a smooth curve over the over the bars. Here our smooth curve would look something like this. Again, notice the curve starts at a low, increases to max, and decreases to a low again. Uh, this curve is what's called the bell curve. And we'll talk more about the bell curve later on um, in the semester. Uh, here's our histogram of the body temperatures. And we draw a bell curve over the tops of them. And notice that that bell curve does kind of fit the, the general pattern of the of the bars. It doesn't fit it quite as well as in the previous example, but um, it, it does exhibit the, that same basic behavior. And so for this reason, we would say that our body temperature is normally distributed. Now, if we have normal distribution, we also have some non-normal distributions. Non-normal doesn't mean that something's wrong with it. It just means that it does not have a normal distribution. Here's a histogram of the weights of several pennies. And if we note here, we see that we've got uh, several pennies that weigh um, a little uh, around two and a half uh, grams. And then we've got several pennies that weigh a little bit more than, than three grams. And there's nothing in between. Notice, again, overall, this does not exhibit that bell curve pattern. It does not start at a low, increase to max, and decrease to a low again. Um, what this histogram indicates is that we've got two different types of pennies, those that weigh around two and a half grams and those that weigh a little above above three grams. And, and this is true because uh, at one point in time, I think it was 1984, they changed the formulation of pennies. They went from all copper to a copper covered nickel and that changed the weight. Uh, here's another distribution of, of checkout times at a, at a grocery store. Here we had people go through a checkout line and we recorded the amount of time they spent in line. And here's a distribution or, or histogram of, of those checkout times. Notice that we got a lot of checkout times that are very small, very close to zero. We have some that are larger, around one or two minutes. <coughs> but again, we do not have this bell curve pattern. So this we would say that this data does not have a normal distribution. Here's another one dealing with the roll of, of a dice. Um, here we, we rolled it and um, we've recorded the frequency of the number of times we got a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And notice that all of those frequencies are roughly the same. Not exactly the same, but roughly the same. Our histogram does definitely not have a bell curve shape. In fact, it's kind of flat on top. This type of distribution has a special name called a uh, uniform distribution. We'll talk more about uniform distributions later on, but this is not a normal distribution. So that's it for this lesson. Uh, the course compass homework is labeled section 22 uh, to 23.